Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 26. And today we're going to talk about usable and rentable square feet versus net and gross square feet. When and why you should use each one of these. This question was in part brought up by Carolina Q. So Carolina, if you're watching, I hope you like this. This may seem like a very simple question, but nevertheless, it is a question that deserves an answer. And to start, I would like to compare these to two different sports that are fairly common around the world, basketball and soccer. Isn't it true that both of these sports use similar equipment? For example, they both use similar balls. And when you compare the ball that each sport uses, what are the similarities between them? When you look at them, aren't they technically the same? I mean, they're used to play sports, they're both circular, they're both bouncy, but even though they are very similar, they're simply not the same. And in order to know which one you want to use, you need to really ask yourself, what sport do you want to play? It's really a simple question. If you want to play basketball, then you have to use a basketball. And if you're going to play soccer, then you have to use a soccer ball. Although to be fair, if you really, really wanted to, I guess you could use a soccer ball and bounce it around. Or you could technically use a basketball and kick it around. I think some people would get rather embarrassed if they had to use a ball that didn't fit with the sport. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use one, but again, under normal circumstances, you probably wouldn't. Well, something very similar happens when you're talking about buildings. As it relates to buildings, oftentimes as an architect or as an interior designer, you must measure floors in order to get square footages. And there's different methods of getting those square footages. As mentioned earlier, there's usable, rentable, net, gross. But similar to the question we asked before, you have to ask yourself, why do I need this square footage? There's mainly two reasons. One, because you're trying to comply with building code. You're either trying to get the number of occupants in a certain area, you're trying to figure out if the number of occupants triggers an occupancy group, or if it triggers certain egress requirements. Whatever it may be, you want to get that square footage to see how you comply with a certain section of the building code. Alternatively, another reason why we architects and interior designers may need to get measurements and square footages for a certain building or suite is because our client wants to use it for marketing or leasing. Now, that square footage has nothing to do with the building code. In the end, it actually has to do with how much money your client can ask for rent or if he or she is selling the building, how much money he or she can sell the building for. So one kind of funny and silly way of thinking about this is that one of them figures out how many people you need to get out of a building, while the other one figures out how much money you can get out of a building, right? <laughs> Anyways, I don't know if I'm the only one that finds that funny. But again, once you figure out what sport you're playing here, I mean, what reason you need to get these measurements, then you kind of realize which measuring method you need. If you need to get square footages to comply with building code, then you must use gross and net square footages accordingly as defined by the building code. If you need these square footages for marketing, then you must use usable and rentable square feet. And under normal circumstances, you use BOMA standards to figure that out. Now, if there's a part of you that's wondering, well, how do I figure out gross and net and, you know, what's the differences and what's usable and rentable? Well, guess what? There's an Archi Corner video for that. If you want to figure out differences between gross and net square footage, then you can watch Archi Corner episode number 22, which talks about gross and net square footage. And in this particular video, it shows how that can help you calculate occupant loads. If you're trying to figure out the differences between usable and rentable, then Archi Corner episode 25 talks about the basic BOMA requirements for office buildings and also what usable and what rentable square feet are. If after listening to this video you thought to yourself, man, that's just pretty simple stuff, then guess what? I've done my job. Because making your life easier and trying to make things easy to understand is what I am trying to do.
Oh yeah. Anyway, if you like this video, please don't leave without giving it a thumbs up. It really helps. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Press that subscribe button. Or not, just come back and watch another video some other time, it's cool. As you may already know, a lot of the themes lately have been directly from comments left in the videos. So continue to leave questions and ideas for future videos. Perhaps your idea might be the next video. I hope you like this and if so, don't forget to share with others and share the love. But until next time, this is Archie Corner signing out.